to interrupt. So, so you're saying um, they, they start by, um, you know, looking at a research area, reading all the papers and something interesting comes up. Uh, but I think, yeah, going back to it, it comes down to reading these papers, figuring out what can be productionized, how do you write production level code, but also having some sort of business sense of how to take it to the market. Um, and I think that's just how a lot of these deep tech companies are born is can you ingest those papers, understand how to read them, um, and try to build something off it? Um, so in India, the AI trend, for example, is very big on um, um, using um, language models to create small little applications on other things. But there is no foundation model coming out of India, which is surprising, or not that I've heard of. Um, but you know, here now, like building language models is all like it's moving so fast it's kind of a thing of the past right it's like well that was like last year like this year you need to build your own foundation models from other modalities that are not um language because that's kind of done um so i think yeah those are some you know some ways to attack the um deep tech space in general um how would you advise like let's say a um a, a final year or even like a second year um uh software engineering student um in india who you know is really smart reads maybe like 20 books a year applies th this stuff um but you know at that stage they probably haven't had that exposure to like oh this is how you actually go like review all the academic literature so the the best that i came up with was um I, i've been tr just trying to learn this stuff myself but i'm just like okay well like i found like the you know the like a16z like ai canon and a bunch of other like ai research you know just just the popular like andrew ng ones or, or, or whatever a bunch of textbooks and i was like okay i'll read all this stuff and then i should be at a level where i can read at least like the review articles um, yeah. before then going into like the, the actual in-depth research um would that be generally how you would so i guess what i'm asking is like how would you self-study it if like yeah. either from scratch or from like first year computer science student like knowledge yeah that's a really good question um it's a tricky question i'll see i can talk about my journey and it's similar to yours so um I think step one is to find a niche, right? That you're really interested in. Like for me, it was neuroscience and I started reading everything about neuroscience um, and neuro and especially neuroscience and AI. Like I was su super into it. So I was reading all the general stuff that was out there, like, cause it's easier to understand and like by all the different accelerators. YC has a lot of internal things that we're putting out. Um, Google has a lot of, cool internal white papers on neuroscience. Um, started writing some of my own uh, on neuroscience as well. And then, you know, kind of just naturally fell into like engineers and AI scientists um, sharing, like this is a new white paper that came out, you should read it. Um, started, you know, with the smaller summaries and try to like, it. I mean, it takes a long time to read. I, you know, even if you're like, you read like 20 papers, you would still feel like, you know, it's 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 never it's easy right so you want to go section by section you want to be, i'm going to tackle the section fully understand if you read it a few times you kind of get it and now with OpenAI, to be honest i like often just copy paste like a paragraph in open ai to give me a summary chat gpt and then go into the depths of it and i really leverage chat gpt to understand what's going on um and then go section by section and that's how i started getting into foundation models different kinds of foundation model my co-founder who's written a few papers himself. But you know, like, uh, especially Nature Scientific is super good for the best of the best papers that come out. Um, so I constantly like following along as, as to what's happening there. Um, and yeah, kind of use ChatGPT and keep up, did, stay up. Did you have to, um, did, did you have to learn like the just foundational biology um, or, you know, like, I don't know, like for, for the neuroscience stuff, like, I don't know, did you like go through all biology on Khan Academy or like buy all the first and second year biology textbooks? Or did you kind of just go straight to the review articles and be like, okay, I don't understand something. Let's like ask chat GTP and then like, you know, fill in uh, backwards. Yeah, no, I did. Um, so I, I spent about not much, three to four months. Um, 
so I, I knew I wanted to work with brainwaves. I found brainwaves fascinating for a long time. Um, my co-founders, you know, been writing papers on this for 10 years. So he knew everything about it. Um, so I knew what my niche was, right? It wasn't the brain in general. Um, it was more like brain applications using EEG. Um, so I learned everything about it that I possibly could. Um, like, I, you know, I, I did buy a few books on it um, and that were advised by our advisors, like some of the top epileptologists. Um, and, you know, a lot of these books, I mean, you start with EEG for dummies kind of books and then you like go uh, build up from there. And then I expanded to, okay, well, what's this EEG? Then what's an MRI? You know, what's a CT scan? What's an ultrasound? So it was like, but all adjacent things, like I didn't go in general, like, into everything to do with the brain or what are the different levels of the brain it was more what is my subject matter expertise i need and then what are the adjacent things around it that i need to know yeah so you, you didn't really go all the way back to okay let's just learn all of like first year second year biology and then like go into neuroscience and then you're, you're yeah. just like I'm, I'm interested in like eeg for like uh you know like neuroscience um yeah. how, how, did, how did you come to that um uh like problem area or, or interest area because I, I can imagine you know there's like thousands millions of like interesting things in uh in like biotech uh that that you know people could potentially work on yeah um I, so at google at the google uh moonshot factory which is for google x uh where they work on like weird things um there was a cool project of it spun out into a company called next sense um but they were building EEG earphones where like you can listen to music, but it also can track EEG of your brain via the earphones. Um, and then I was just talking to some engineers and you know, it was like where well, the applications can be crazy to the point where right now neuroscience is one of the few fields that is subjective. Like you go for mental health, you go for ADHD, you fill out a little form, they track your eye movement, but it's all subjective. It's on the doctor's discretion. Um, all the way to when you have brain surgery like which part of the brain to operate on it's all subjective how do you make it measurable that was their whole thing like if i'm working i should know what my optimal level of focus is um if i'm sleeping i need to know when my brain was fully in resting state um and that's how that's what i got really interested in like if you work out you should know how it impacts your brain people say it's really good for mental health where i want to like know what is that percentage work out how does my brain show in terms of uh performance um so i just got really interested in that and then that's how we started but then realized that obviously that's too far in the future uh and the way to get started is in the hospitals and in in research facilities and drug discovery um so that's where we're starting um at the how, how did you come across the problem of um you know let, let's say during like brain surgery um there's no like uh, objective measure of is your brain doing okay it's just like oh hey you're awake you're responding yeah so so then i met my co-founder uh dimitri um who you know i mean he did his phd in hospitals so I, I was looking for something specific. Someone in neuroscience came across him um, through mutual friends. And he was basically um, like, I know everything about this problem. You're exactly right. I've been working on EEG for this many years. Um, and yeah, I mean, so it was a lot of like. And, and so did that come after you kind of studied like about this sort of EEG stuff, and you're like, hey, this is really fascinating, and now um, I'm gonna go through my network to find, um, you know, like, like a, a researcher, uh, like a seasoned, um, like sort of chief science type of guy in, in the space? It was a mix of both. Um, I did a few interviews, like I talked to neurologists, like classic, you know, fascinating problem, let me go talk to as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. Talked to a bunch of them and heard kind of similar stuff, so I'm like, okay, well, let me go find the co-founder who's like deep into this, we can confirm that, then went to him and went into the weeds of why it's like that. Um, and yeah, so, but it was a lot of pre-interviewing before um, yeah. agreeing on. So, to re rewinding a bit, um, cause you, you mentioned um, that the f one of the first things that sort of caught your interest about the space was like the Google X uh, uh, project with, with like the ear um, stuff. Um, I, I guess like, uh 
one thing I, I've been um, kind of blogging about in terms of like a way to get ideas uh, is or, or to you know build up expertise in a particular space um, is just like study a hundred companies in whatever like space or industry that you're passionate about um, and then uh you know and then i i guess like look at okay well what research papers do they affect because i i guess when i was thinking about myself i was like all right just go into the research space i don't know what could be commercializable and what could it be um did did you take like a similar kind of path where you're like okay let's just study every single like eeg um like neuroscience startup and and see you know where the gaps are and and uh you know if we can put all the best parts together or like see what ideas that like triggers kind of um kind of but the difference was that um you know so ai and foundation models are so new right so no one is really doing it uh, or there's no like eeg especially i feel like it's, a, it's, it's so outdated all the eeg startups were uh, so we studied all the eeg startups which was good to know that they were very outdated um so the thing we learned was okay the ai in eeg startups is like not really ai it's just some rule based machine learning algorithm from like 10 years ago um and you know they just don't perform as well no one uses them um so that was good validation so it was more from the papers like you know picking like okay well neuroscience is interesting google's doing some cool stuff uh let's read on what's happening in the papers like what's happening in the labs like is this something we can take out of the lab um that's how i went about it so instead of studying startups i actually studied a lot of work in the different labs how, how um how could you gauge like uh you know how commercializable is this um and then i i guess what was the um like how did you make the link between like oh th these are you know, the, I guess the, there's probably a bunch of steps, right? There's like, okay, there's all this cool tech. Uh, is it commercializable? But also, like, how would how did you make the link to like, oh, um, we're gonna link it to like building a foundational model for like your your brainwaves um, to be able to you know like um, track um, you know like like health outcomes and and other things. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it was just really. Um... I mean, for one, having an understanding of how language foundation models work and it's like, well, why can't this be applied to this thing? And then papers kept coming out like back to back. So it was a positive signal um, of like, OK, there's one paper, then there's another paper, there's another paper, They're all slightly improving on each other. And then the missing link was it was in the lab. So they didn't have enough money to burn on compute because to train an EEG model, you need like a few million dollars of compute cost for it to really be very good. Uh, same with language models, right? Like, I mean, OpenAI keeps burning money on text and the more text they turn on, the more models keep getting better. Um, so we were like, well, these are getting to the basic outcomes and we know, and they're using open uh, source data and they're spending about 100,000 in compute. Can we spend more? Talk to my co-founder who's an AI scientist himself, um, confirm those things um see i mean and you know just reading the papers you kind of get a sense of what direction they're going in and if it's possible how much money did they get in grants to do this um and then you can have well it was only 100 grand to get to this point if you can raise five million six million dollars you can really take it far that that makes sense because yeah so you mentioned that there were some like like rules engine based things and then they're like this is ai and then you're like right, this is not ai and yeah. let's actually like make it ai um yeah that, that makes sense um so so going back to so so you you um you know you, you uh you you mentioned the 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 um company out like google x and and the the, the headphones and you're like okay like brainwaves are like interesting um how did you then go about like reading papers like what what was your process and what did you find like i guess the most efficient way to navigate that landscape um without you know like brain implosion yeah yeah that's a, i mean you know the one thing is i was reading papers for my job at google anyway because i was working on the gemini integration into chrome um and so it was just part of the role like I, like and i was a product lead so part of the role was um kind of be up to date with what's happening in the lab for language models because back then language models were super new like you know gpt3 had just come out and it was the biggest deal ever. Um, you know, working, I mean, also GPT came out of a, 
like same lab that this EG project came out of, which is interesting. Um, and then, so I was just reading it anyway, but the way I would always go about it is again, leverage like chat GPT and put a bunch of stuff in there, read the summaries through chat GPT, be like, well, this is worth it. This is not worth it. And, you know, have GPT help me with a um, bunch of things. Like what is the factor rating of this? Like, is it, you know, is it high value? Is it, um, is it quoted by other people? Like how much has this been shared? And then, okay, this is the right paper to read. Let's deep dive yeah. into it. Would, would you start with the review articles or would you just go straight to like, I don't know, like the top 10, like most cited, like, like research papers? Um, it, it depends. A lot of times, you know, in the neuroscience, I got, I became a part of a bunch of neuroscience groups and, you know, these neuroscience and AI um, communities. And I would just read what was circulating in them. And there's these like Slack channels where we, people will be like, okay, this is a new one, super interesting and in what people are talking about or, um, so, so it could be either, it just depends on what's uh, circulating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, so you, you mentioned there were like chat groups and stuff, it was just like, well, what are people talking about is like good to read? So there's like, yeah, so there's this thing called Brain Jewels. Um, it's, it's a very prominent angel investing group of, uh, neuroscience people who've like built and sold, um, you know, like, like the control labs, the founders of control labs are in it. The founder of inflection AI is in it. Um, so these guys are like scouting for the next big startup. So they'd be like, oh, someone was building this, or, you know, this is super interesting. This could be commercialized. So it was just a lot of trend coming from there and because we were part of brain jewels uh early on and then uh, uh so, so just like brain jewels like like yeah. Angel, but like brain yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Take that, that and then uh again this you know this like the highly cited review articles are coming from the more prominent neuroscience labs are obviously or, or academic papers are the ones to focus on in general um and you know i feel like one it's the way the internet algorithms work in general is once you're it finds out you're in the neuroscience community, it's like reading news, right? You will find out what the next paper is. You'll see it on LinkedIn, you'll see it somewhere else. Um, like, I feel like all the prominent papers have come my way some way or the other without actually going out there and looking for them anymore. It's almost as if like, I find out about a war happening somewhere and I would, it's gonna come my way one way or another. It's like a similar way. Cool? Yeah, no, great, great chatting, man. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah, likewise. Uh, really nice to meet you both. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to stay in touch. Thank sweet, you so sweet. much yeah, for your uh, time, definitely, Chris. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take care, Chris. Bye. Bye. Bye.